What's going on, fuckers? Everybody and ladies. Uh, today we're going to talk about Amazon Flex again because apparently that's what this channel is fucking turned into is me talking about Amazon Flex. More so, I like talking about business. Why? Well, um, foreshadowing, there's a reason why I'm liking to talk about business. Anyway, what I want to focus on today and what I want to focus on right now is basically going through my comments and having a conversation with you all. I appreciate when people are engaged in the conversation because this is a community. Me driving for Flex is a community of drivers and I want to be a part of that community. And the best way to be a part of that community is to engage in discussion. Now, a lot of people have been agreeing with me. Some people have been, you know, now and then saying, well, you're not so right about this, but that's just how it is in my area. And I totally get it. I love any and all criticism and I also love any and all engagement. So if you disagree with what I say, you know, let me know. Put it in the comments down below and let's have a discussion. I love to engage with my audience and that's exactly what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to start this off with a comment from a woman. Actually, two women, because uh, from what I can gather based upon channel names or usernames and whatever, this is, this is, uh, yours are obviously women. So the first one's going to come from Yavon, I believe. Capital X, or X, 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 X. Anyway, so Yvonne writes, Women hate Amazon Flex too, smiley face. They are consistent, though. Even over here in Scotland, UK, they are total dicks. Everything you describe in your videos, I have experienced personally lately, and made to feel like a complete useless nobody. I enjoyed last... I joined last month to try and take the stress out of Xmas and was hoping and was looking forward to seeing it instead of worrying like normal. Looking forward to enjoying it instead of worrying like normal. Anyway, last week I was getting down all the time and my confidence was shot, but the psycho bitch finally arrived. And I told them what they could do with their shitty, flexible, knob blocky piece of shit selves. Only well, not as polite. Are you talking about the warehouse people? I don't know what you're talking about specifically. But basically what you're telling me is you got to a breaking point. The whole thing just became absurd, frustrating. Now, here's my response to that. Um, not so much the comment, but the idea that the comment uh, represents. Uh, my reply to Yvonne. Thank you. As a woman, thank you for being on the, a part of the conversation. Um, also, I have engagement from an audience over in the UK. Imagine that shit. It's fuck, we're going international on this motherfucker. Okay, so we're talking about the frustrations that, that come with this. And as I've said before, y'all say it with me, Amazon feels like they're too big to fail. They're too big to give a shit, right? And also, once again, Domination, uh, he also commented saying that, or was it Atlanta? Fucking blows. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pain in the dick. This... Just having to deal with these guys is a real difficulty. And a lot of times it comes from the warehouse. I'm lucky, and I'm lucky enough to where the vast majority of the people at the warehouse that I go to are actually pretty cool. There are some onesies and twosies though that are total assholes. Um, there's this girl that whenever I drive up, um, I've noticed, not to make it a race thing, but for some strange reason, if it's anyone that shares, if, if she finds, a, if she's talking to a driver that shares a skin color with her, She's nice, she's cordial, she's, you know, helpful. But anytime anyone of, of a different race has spoken to this woman, she treats them like fucking dirt. She doesn't really answer their questions. She doesn't really want to fuck with them, doesn't want to be bothered. And I find that to be relatively annoying. Um, you're, it's your job. You're working at the warehouse. You're supposed to assist the drivers so that they can then make Amazon Flex what it's supposed to be. The warehouse people are a part of this um, whole Amazon Flex thing as well. Working there, they are directly tied into how the drivers can experience things. And that's why if you've seen lately in the app um, with this particular update, I know it's not in all locations, but with this particular update, it, you can engage in feedback. And I actually kind of like it a lot more than direct feedback. And what do I mean by direct feedback? When you go in the app, there's an option to click feedback. And every time I've left feedback on that, I've always been given some sort of response. And I'm not sure if it's an automated response, but for some reason it's, it sounds as if, as if it's written in a way as if someone actually looked at it. And it usually takes a little while for them to get back to me. 
but I do feel it's um, automated in such a way to where if you put in certain keywords, then it automatically sends you something. So, um, but the way that it's done now is you go on the app and it says, it's, it states a question and then it says strongly disagree, strongly agree, and everything in between. And I think that's actually a, a lot more usable and fantastic really because from that you can get statistics from a wide number of people and then you can kind of graph it out and, and see where the trends are. Uh, it's really difficult when you get someone like me that, hey, I'm gonna leave feedback real quick, scroll down the thing, press it in, type it in, send it off. Because you, it's really hard to calculate all that and it's just too time consuming on Amazon's end. So the fact that they're actually gathering data on what drivers experience is great. The problem is I don't think they're asking the right questions. Lately, they've been asking a lot of things about warehouse experience, but not with the warehouse employees so much, just what it's like at the warehouse. Like, um, are, the, are the lines long? Are you um, getting um, out quickly? Uh, are there restrooms there? Now, for me in Las Vegas, I'm not entirely sure if there's bathrooms there or not. But then again, I never really got into a position where it's like, oh shit, I need to go take a dump before I fucking head out on my route. Where's the bathrooms? So, but I'm pretty sure other locations there probably is. Uh, so for me, I just put, I don't know, because I'm not gonna lie, I don't fucking know. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Yvonne, these guys, a lot of them there are assholes, a lot of them are pretty shitty. But you gotta remember, when you're dealing with someone that works at the warehouse, you're dealing with an employee of Amazon. Now, is that person representing Amazon in a very particular capacity? Yes, to an extent that they are, but a lot of times you're dealing with an employee who is also an individual. And that individual might have come in on a bad day and be an asshole, right? So fuck them. But as far as Amazon's concerned, any grievances towards Amazon that I have personally is all business related. Because it all filters back into money. How am I going to help you guys earn money and earn money myself at the same time? And I list out the grievances I have because the grievances I have are very realistic. They, they tie into a better relationship between me and Amazon. Uh, the issues that I have with the warehouse and the warehouse employees, I always specify the, the difference between the two of them. And yeah, if you're going to let the psycho bitch out, let the fucking psycho bitch out. But do so cordially. You don't want to come into anything and burn any bridges. I don't know exactly how much power that a lot of the people at the warehouse have. I'm pretty sure that there are people in the warehouse that if you're being rude or if they just feel like if they're just in the fucking mood that they can get rid of you. I, I'm pretty sure they have, at least some people that work at the warehouses have that power. That's why, this one comes from Teresa S. That's why I do not sign up or even sign up for that many blocks. I do not take $54 offers just to go from Samara, Georgia, go to Samara, Georgia from Stone Mountain, Georgia. None of these companies even care about all the miles to get to the warehouse, but most importantly, I am a consumer first. But I get an email that someone did not get a package, but did not even say how that was so. Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, I've received an email saying that, oh, this person never received the package. Now, once again, Amazon doesn't give a whole lot of information on how the intricacies of it work. You gotta kinda do your due diligence on your own to kinda figure it out. But from what I understand, like, oh shit, uh, there's a... Here's my package, I dropped it off, take the picture, knock on the door, fucking bounce, right? So that's typically what a lot of us do. And that picture is essentially a receipt to the customer saying, hey, here's your shit, here's where it's at, have a good day. Fantastic, right? But a lot of times, if you take that picture and it's sent to them, I would like to, I would just like to know, is that picture also saved in a server somewhere um, with everything tied to you, the date, the time, the customer, with all that metadata saying, hey, this driver delivered the package. If it's not there, we have photo proof that it's at that location, then fuck off, right? But if a customer has a complaint, obviously it's gonna be tied back to the driver and go against them. So yeah, does it suck that I had a complaint against me? Hell yeah, would I like to know more information on why? Obviously, yes, I would like that information, but I'm not privy to it, unfortunately, just with their current status of things. And yeah, this whole wear and tear on the car and stuff, and it's like with anything, most jobs don't pay you to drive from home to work. That's, that's just it. I've worked jobs before where I have been given some sort of um, 
mileage incentive, like when I was working in HVAC. They didn't pay me to drive from home to work, but while I was out and about on the job, if I had to use my personal vehicle, they would give me that money back when, uh, without driving a company vehicle. Uh, with Amazon, as I said in my last video, my number one thing I think they should do is offer some sort of driver incentive, uh, update their app in such a way to their map actually fucking works. Actually, on that note, here's how they should handle their maps. I know uh, things like Postmates and DoorDash, from my experience, you can use, you can, it, it directly from the app, it ties into other um, GPS services. So, for example, when I would do DoorDash, I would use Waze, or sometimes I would use um, Google Maps, but that was tied directly into the app. So it's like, hey, I'm about to go to my thing. Uh, Yep, let's go, and it would automatically open the other app with that exact address put in. That is my biggest piece of advice to Amazon. Definitely do that. Your guys' maps, the map in your app, it fucking sucks. It does. I, I guarantee you, I would say at least 60% of us prefer to use an external one. Now, I would say the majority of the time I use the one that's in there. But I still waste a lot of fucking time looking for places. But for me, I like to drop it off, get in the car, press the button, let's go. I'll figure it out when I get close. That's typically how I do it. But if it, if they could like link to another app and have some sort of um, cohesive communication between the two apps, that would be fucking fantastic. And a lot of drivers would really appreciate that. And I guarantee you, if that if app if Amazon did that, um, the driver experience would just be tremendously improved. Just by changing that one little thing. Letting us use something that we want to use, but make it native within the app. Make it easier for us to do our thing. Don't make it so that, you know, it's like, all right, I want to go to this other app. Hold, copy the clipboard, go into the other app. Yes, I'm a passenger. Okay, bam. Okay, good, now we're, you know, instead of, just make it so it's like, yeah, go to the route. Uh, well, I already have it listed as default, so I just got to press the start travel. Goes into the next app, my GPS is going, there we are. That, I guarantee you, if Amazon did that, so many of us would be fucking happy. Because, I, I've said enough on that topic. Love your Amazon Flex uh, videos from Ello. Well, thank you so much for the love, and thank you for the comment as well. You know what, I'm just gonna, bam, thumbs up that motherfucker. Oh, uh, Oh, ACM, uh, he was talking about uh, the being terminated. I just got terminated for five months of working for Flex over some bullshit, and my appeal got denied. But I hear that everyone gets terminated. Uh, Amazon needs to get their shit together. Hopefully, a better competitor comes soon. Yes, hopefully a better competitor does come soon. Ba -ba 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 -ba, ba -ba 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 -ba. All right. Let's talk about that. Terminations, once again. I didn't put this up in my last video, but I will mention it now. It's the holiday season. I don't think that for the next two, three weeks, they're going to be terminating a lot of people. There might be some, some cases here and there. I guarantee you, come January 7th, after January 7th, 2018, a lot of us are going to be let go. Because we're not. it's not going to be as a high demand um, season anymore. The next high demand time is going to be Valentine's Day but it's fucking Valentine's Day. Most people are just gonna go out and buy the shit that they need anyway, unless their loved one is far off. So be on the lookout for that. Understand that after the holiday season, they're not gonna need us as much. That's something you're definitely gonna to wanna to consider. So make sure your ducks are lined up in a row prior um, to the ax coming down. Yeah, I'm just checking out the comments, some of the other comments of some other shit. Uh, Oh, driven, driven, uh, blah, 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 delivery driven. Uh, it gives a little uh, pro tip, as it were. Buy a foldable cart. Now, uh, this is in relation to dealing uh, with like commercial office buildings and stuff. When I used to deliver pizza during lunch, I would get three to five hundred dollar orders. I would have to take multiple trips from my car back to the office. Sometimes the office was on the fifth, sixth, eighteenth floor. That was so time consuming, very inefficient. So I bought a cheap thirty five dollar foldable cart problem solved. Yeah, that is uh, actually pretty cool. And it, for someone like me that has a truck, that's something that can actually be done. But I don't see myself going to office buildings 
with a whole bunch of packages that often. I went to some office buildings today and in both office buildings, I had two and then three packages. It's, it's, not, it's not enough for me to go out and invest that money when I can just carry them. Uh, I understand that in those situations where it's going to be like that one time I went out and it was just fucking crazy. Yeah, in that situation, yeah, it would make sense. But does it really warrant? Like, it took me about maybe 25 minutes to do all that. Was it a pain in the ass? Yeah, but I, I just can't justify that for me. But I do think it's actually a really useful tip for anyone that if it works for them, then great. Um, oh, yeah, so EFF. 808. Shouldn't Amazon pay more for nighttime deliveries? I haven't taken one at night, but it seems to not be my advantage. Poor light, and even in the nice series, you can be robbed, shot by the homeowner. I live in Texas where these people are gun happy. Uh, oh, he also wrote in another video. Great videos slash info, bro. I did my first Amazon Flex 2.5 hour block yesterday. I'm on the fence about it. I'm doing this as a part-time extra money and using my second car, which is sort of a beater. Uh, still has some value. I've, I'm concerned about the maintenance, gas, taxes, and other expenses that being a flex driver can incur. Amazon is saving so much money, as you pointed out, by using slash abusing us. Are there any pointers? Is there any pointers to try and offset the costs of being a 1099 contractor? You think of the ones that I'm listing. So, uh, standard mileage, I believe it's 3.2 cents a mile. Phone charger, write off deduction, coffee tools. No, Congress is fucking with the tax code. Some of these actually may not be available to 2018. Yeah, so a lot of these things are kind of all over the place. Um, now, when it comes to taxes and stuff, especially you know, doing the 10, 10, uh, the independent contractor shit, uh, that is not my forte. I don't know a lot, a lot of this shit. But what I will say is keep every fucking receipt. Keep every fucking receipt. If you go out and you fucking get gas for your car, and that gas is going to be utilized for that Amazon delivery, keep the fucking receipt. Calculate the mileage. Amazon's not gonna fucking let them know. Amazon's not gonna even let you know how much mileage you did. So remember, from the, dude, I'm leaving my house, headed to the warehouse, right? Keep track of your mileage at that point. So like, hey, um, uh, I, I always do these videos grossly unprepared. Do I not have a fucking pen? Holy shit. Okay. So let's say from your house to the warehouse, all along your route and then back. Let's say for that day you did 60 miles, 50 or 60 miles. Annotate that. Make sure you have a fucking list of all the mileage that you did. So when you do do your taxes, you can list that accordingly and include the receipts. Um, that's my advice as far as that goes. Um, the phone charger write off deduction. Um, if you had a, uh, a phone charger, now the phone is really kind of hard to justify because remember you have to be able to justify these things. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's a way that you can do it. Coffee, I don't know. Dude, you can't fucking write off coffee. I mean, that's a personal expense. But as far as your phone charger, if you bought the phone charger for your car so you can keep your phone charged, I'm pretty sure that's fine. But justifying having a phone for doing that, it's going to be hard because a phone, a cell phone is usually a lot for personal work. But I'm pretty sure there's still a way you can do it. But I remember you have to justify it. I don't really know all the nitty gritty about the tax shit. But oh my god, this is going on pretty long. All right, let me kind of try and wrap this up just a little bit. Um, here's my last piece of advice for Amazon. But I think a lot of us would agree on. Um, if any of you have ever done DoorDash, I go on DoorDash, right? And the coolest thing about DoorDash is what you know ahead of time. So for example, let's say for example, this is Las Vegas, the Las Vegas area. Uh, everything's put off in a court, uh, like different areas. So when I go for a schedule on DoorDash, it's like, oh, I'm gonna work a three hour schedule, cool. But I get to choose where, based upon availability and demand, I get to essentially choose the area that I wanna work in. If I wanna work in this area, for the most part, it's only gonna give me deliveries that are within this boundary. Deli uh, pickups and drop-offs within that boundary. Sometimes some shit happens. You just gotta go with it. But typically that's how it's gonna be. Um, that's what I think that would be really, really cool for Amazon, if you could know ahead of time. Now the problem is why they, why, why they would probably not do that is because Amazon's number one point, uh, their focus is to get you 
in and out of the warehouse as quickly as possible. And that's it. That's why I do not think Amazon will do something like this. Because I would love to go in ahead of time knowing the, the general area that I'm going to be delivering in. But a lot of times I go in and it's like, they, I get assigned like a thing and it's like in Boulder fucking city. Or I get something like, oh shit, it's fucking down over in Spring Valley. It's close to home, not a problem. Other times it's like, oh, it's the north end of Vegas. Traffic's going to kind of be a bitch, but fuck it, whatever, right? It's really a crapshoot. Uh, from my experience, I have, n and, and at least I, I can't say for all areas, but in the Las Vegas area, we don't know what the fuck area of town we're going to be delivering in until we start scanning our shit. Would it be better for our, us drivers? Hell yes, it would be better for us to kind of know what we're doing ahead of time. However, that's not feasible for Amazon because the whole purpose of this program is to cut off overhead, is to cut off costs. And if they were to do that, that would mean that prior to the, the, the block coming out, if they said like, oh, here's a four hour block that's going to be in this area, they need to have those set aside. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible. There is a way that they could figure out the logistics to make it feasible. But as things currently stand, you know, they would have to know ahead of time what packages they're getting in. For the most part, Amazon Flex is a demand is a demand economy a sort of contractor job thing. Um, a lot of the work that comes in for people to be able to do these deliveries, that's all based upon the demand. How many packages are being ordered in a given area? If there's so many packages um, that are in Las Vegas, they're obviously going to need more people. But unless there's that high level of demand, then there's not going to be as many blocks that are needed because we don't need, you know, all these fucking people to, you know, you want to, <laughs> sorry, I'm all over the place. You want to, you want to be able to maximize it. You want to have like, hey, here's a four hour block like I had a day. Here's 44 packages fucking go, right? That's how Amazon would love to do it. They want to make sure for the lowest amount of money, have someone deliver the most packages. And they, you know, it, it always kind of changes. It's always kind of all over the place. I've gotten five hour blocks with fucking 30 packages. I've gotten three and a half hour blocks with almost 60 packages. It's, it's really kind of shitty, but the cool thing about those situations, I don't know if this was like predetermined or whatever, but I guess one person literally ordered like 10 different boxes and that happened several times. A lot of it ended up going to the same stops. So I think it's really based upon stops instead of how many packages total, because a lot of people just buy all sorts of shit. Um, uh, Letitia Coleman, laughing my ass off at all the cursing. Thank you very much. That's what we offer here. A lady that loves cursing. Those are the kind of ladies that need to be subscribed to this channel. Now, if uh, you're not subscribed, fucking go for it, because we are, like, like my channel has been hovering around 300. Um, it was close to 300. It was about 280 to 290 for the last couple of years. But since I've said fuck it and decided to actually start uplo uploading regularly, um, I'm at, what, 320-something? It's refreshing. Just give me a moment. 327 subscribers. I'm almost about to hit 100,000 views for the lifetime of my channel. Uh, so, based upon the current trend of how I've been doing, not only am I going to hit 100,000 views by the end of this year, but I'm also going to receive my first $100 um, in payment of ad revenue being on the YouTube platform. I've been on for over 10 years. I've been a part of YouTube for like 11 years now. Holy shit. It's taken that long for me to get my first ad revenue check. It's taken this long for me to get my first 100,000 views. We are almost there, and I could not do any of this without you guys. And the people that are brand new here, thank you guys for coming on. Am I talking a lot about Amazon lately? Fuck yeah, because that is what I am currently doing. And what has this channel always been? Well, this channel's always kind of been a place for me to just fucking rant and rave. And that's what I do. I let my thoughts out to the universe, and it helps a lot to have a great community like you guys to be active, to be um, subscribing, to be commenting, to be liking the videos. It's been fantastic, and, and I really couldn't feel this level of success with working on YouTube uh, if it wasn't for you guys. So thank you guys very much. Um, I'm going to put a playlist together finally so you can, guys can watch all of my fucking Amazon rant videos. Uh, and if you guys want to support the channel, 
um, in any way. I haven't started a Patreon or anything yet because I'm not, I don't really have like anything regularly set, mainly because like this, I'm, I'm, I, I, this computer is a potato, so I really can't edit on it. So, and I occasionally use KindMaster on my phone to do edits and it's just, fuck it. So I'm not gonna launch any kind of Patreon until I can actually realistically make content. But if you wanna subscribe, or if you want to contribute to the channel and support the channel, likes, comments, subscriptions, that goes a fucking long way. Um, and hey, like I've said before, uh, check out TubeBuddy. Uh, TubeBuddy is what I use um, to check out like how my channel is doing. Oh yeah, and can you, hopefully you guys can see it. So this is basic. fuck me. This is basically how, how well the channel has been doing. Uh, a lot more female engagement like i use like i do the the i pay for tube buddy but for me and my needs as a creator it's worth it you don't need to uh at all by any means you do not need to uh you don't need to at all pay for it but you can if you want just to get other stuff if you're a creator but if you're just someone that uses youtube you can see all sorts of fucking cool analytics and shit. On, like, this comes free if you download the extension. And you can just see, like, how their video is performing, how it's doing, all the tags and shit. I think it's great even just for someone that's that wants to know more about other YouTube creators and, and how well their channel is doing. Or even if you want to just say, oh, wow, this guy is using these tags. That's why that video is printing. I'm going to use those tags in my next video. So, anyway. Yeah, download TubeBuddy. That link is in the description. Um... Yeah, so you guys are great. You guys are fantastic. Thank you so much for the love. Uh, any comments, questions, concerns, gripes, you want to fucking say that I'm completely full of shit and I have no idea what I'm talking about, leave it in the comment box uh, down below. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks, Valor, signing off.